Hey y'all, it's Diane with Shawl Craft One and my old barn door. And I'm working on a journal cover for another one of my custom order journals um, that I'm making. And so I thought I'd just let the video play. I'm trying to do kind of a mixed media type journal cover for this one. Um, she said she liked it quilty stuff. And um, so I'm gonna try and add some quilt pieces. This is one of my um, quilted backgrounds from my digital kits um, in my Etsy shop. And then I'm gonna add some of this for the spine. And so, and then I, she also likes blue and purple and she likes birds. So I've kind of done um, some work on the cover already. Um, I just basically Mod Podged book pages all over the cover, and then I did some ink sprays, and so we're just going to kind of take it from here and see where we get with it, and I think what I want to do is I want to add some deco, um, not decoupage, <laughs> I want to add some gesso, and so let me grab a brush, and I just want to, I'm adding the gesso because I want to kind of tone down the colors on the cover and so I'm just gonna do a little bit of gesso and so I'm just gonna spread some very thinly on this piece of wax paper and then I'm gonna take it and I'm just gonna kind of lay it across here put a little there and a little there a little bit there so this is kind of an easier way to get your gesso kind of spread out so that you don't get too much on it and then what I want to do is I want to take my brush and it's fairly dry and I'm just gonna kind of dry brush over it and my hope is that this will just kind of lighten up the gesso on the cover I mean not the gesso the ink sprays on the cover so that they're not so prominent okay I think that works all right and then I'm just gonna dry this a little bit before I go to the next step. I just want to make sure it's good and dry because then I'm going to try and add some pieces of the napkin. So hang on. Okay, so I have the gesso dry and it did lighten it up um, a fairly good bit. And so I just want to take some pieces from some napkins with some purples and some blues and just add them in. Um, really like this down here I think that would look really cool across the bottom so let's just go with that so I'm just gonna tear tear it out I don't want it to be so bright but maybe we can we can add it and then just so it a little and I just kind of want the shape I'm not really looking for the flowers on the bottom part so I'm just trying to kind of tear around that shape somewhat I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna tear this out so you don't have to watch me tear the whole thing out because that's boring and I'll come right back. <laughs> okay, so I have some pieces cut out and then I have the, um, the quilted pieces. So we're gonna, um, I'm just gonna gesso these on, not gesso. Lord have mercy. Mod Podge, we're gonna use Mod Podge. <laughs> Just get our brush here. Start at the bottom. Oh, 
sorry hopefully y'all can see what I'm doing and I'm just going to add this little border onto the bottom and then I'm just gonna brush it on gently and it's not gonna matter if it's you know in the um, on the spine because the spine's gonna be covered anyways Okay, and then I am so loving these napkins here with the birds with the bird nest and they're the perfect color for her journal so we're just gonna add that on kind of in the middle to be like the focal point And I'm trying to make sure I don't get many wrinkles. Okay. And then I just kind of wanted to randomly put some of these um, quilty pieces on the back here so I'm just gonna go over the whole back of the journal with Mod Podge because it's gonna give it a good sealed coat anyway and that way I can just kind of lay pieces in and some type of a random display just kind of very organically have them on there and some of them have edges that are a little bit too white so we're going to tear those off and we're just going to kind of start laying pieces in here just to kind of see what we get Now, I don't want too many. I don't want it to overwhelm the cover. And I kind of want them real random. And I'm just going to start mod podging that down and see what it looks like. And we can go from there. I kind of want to do something right in this corner here. Just a little piece. And I like how they kind of blend in. And I might go right here just because I don't know how far over my spine piece is going to come and I don't want it to have like, you know, awkward looking gaps in it. Okay. 
Okay, I think we're good on that. So now I think what I want to do is <clears throat> I'm going to dry it and then we'll come back and we'll do a little bit more to it before we put the spine on it and do the inside of it. So hang on for me. Okay, I've got it dried. <clears throat> and to me, these colors are quite bright. And I want them a little more muted. So we're going to add a little bit more gesso on top of them. Just so they're not as bright as that. So I am going to just take a little bit of gesso and I'm going to put it right here. So that I can kind of get my brush a little dry. And just kind of brush it over in some areas and lighten it up a little. And then we'll do the same on the back with some of the quilty pieces so they're not so bright. I have really been having fun with these journals and playing around with some mixed media stuff because I haven't ever really played around a lot with mixed media stuff. And so it's been quite a journey for me and a learning experience as well to, you know, learn how to use some of the products that the art journalers use in their mixed media projects so it's been interesting okay so now I'm gonna dry my gesso a little make sure it's good and dry and then we're gonna play some more so hang on for me okay so with the back cover I didn't want the words to be as prominent as they were so I put a little extra gesso on there and dried that and now I want to do some stamping and of course I have to have my script stamp because I love this stamp. And so, let me put this back on my my podge so it doesn't dry out. Learn that trick from mom. Okay, and then we'll take this is Walnut Stain, Tim Holtz. And we're just going to do some random stamping on here. and see how we come out with it. Let me grab, I just want a scrap piece of paper to stamp on so that if I go off the edge of the page, it goes on the paper and not my mat. Okay, so I just kinda wanna come up here and do a little stamp there. It's really light and I like it like that. So we're going to come here and just kind of press in the middle. That's not snapping very much, is it? Let's see if we can get it a little darker. I mean, you can see it a little, but I kind of wanted it to be a little more prominent than that. So let's try it that way. Try some on the back. It's not doing what I want it to do. I think my ink pad is, is getting pretty dried out.
But I mean, you can see it a little bit, but I'm almost wondering if I do the black, but I don't have any black that's gonna stay good. Hmm. Well, let's try something else. Let's try a different stamp. Maybe a floral stamp. I wish I had a small butterfly stamp, but I don't think I do. I just have these big ones. Let's stamp it and see what it looks like. I just kind of want to stamp it off the edge of the page, kind of like that. Just enough to where you can see the butterfly's wings. Still not doing what I want it to do. And this is what you get when you play with mixed media. <laughs> that it's just kind of barely showing up so you can just see a little bit of the flourishes in there so I'm just going to do some random random stamping and then pull out my, there we go, my trusty old coastal stamp. And just do some random ones around. Nothing too much. And I like it as you get, you know, as you stamp it a few times it gets lighter. And I like that look. We're just going to randomly place some of these around and go off the edge of the page some. And maybe even right here a little. Now a lot of this is going to be covered up, you know, with the, um, the quilt piece that I'm going to put as the spine. But I'm kind of liking this think that it's just random enough and just light enough just to add a little extra something to the page so I think I like the way it turned out and I just kind of wanted it to be you know something simple and very pretty so I kind of like that I think I like it all right so now I'm not gonna put the fabric or the quilt piece on the edge yet or the spine yet because I like to sew my signatures in first and then put um, the quilt piece on there so we're gonna flip him over and work on the inside now I tried something new with my scrap pieces where are we on our time we're at 20 minutes um, so I'll show you what I did I took, like, I had gotten this from, um, uh, I don't know, I got an order from Panera Bread in this bag, and, and then something else in this bag. So, I just took my scrap pieces that I had in my scrap box, and I just kind of glued them on in, you know, random fashion. So I like this one because it has the birds and the purples and the blues in it that she likes. And so I thought I might could cut a piece of this to be the inside covers for the journal. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut this down. So 
I'm going to kind of measure here. I kind of want to see. Because I'm going to have to cut some of the edge off down here because it's, you know, jaggedy. So I think... What I'm going to do is just, I'm going to cut this in half right here. I need more room on my desk, or less stuff on my desk. One of the two. So I'm just going to kind of cut this off at the edge of the book here. Not worrying about it being straight or anything. Just trying to get rid of some of the bulk. Now, again, I've never done this, so this is um, going to be trial and error for me. So I think I think I want to trim up this edge here and just trim off some of the brown paper bag that you're seeing that's kind of jaggedy and get it a little more even. It's not going to be super even because y'all know I can't cut straight for nothing. But it'll get it to a point to where I can work with it a little better. Okay. And I think I need to trim some off the edge over here because it's got this little divot in it. I guess where the. Um, you know, they have that little punch in the side of the bag or, what, or the top of the bag. Okay. Just trying to see what it's going to look like. Yep, I like that. And then I'm going to turn my cover this way. And I want it to come down as far as it can come down here so that it covers up my brown spine. And then I'm just going to trim. Let me move this wax paper. Trim, trim off some of this and get rid of some of the bulk. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my I'm going to bring my paper trimmer over and trim it up better. I just wanted to kind of try and get an idea of what size piece I was going to need because, you know, it's a little hard to cut such a large piece. Alright. So now... see how it's fitting in there so far okay I think I'm gonna have to fold this in order to trim it up nicely so I know that um, the height of my journal 10 inches so I'm going to go ahead and trim it at 10 inches I'm going to just fold this in half and these are they're fairly pliable which makes it easy to work with yeah, okay. so let's go here So what I want to do first is see if I can get a straight edge. Let me see how this one is. Hmm, not sure if it's going to work. I may have cut it too short to straighten up my edges. We're going to try it and see if it'll if we can get it to work. And if we can't, then we'll try something else. It's, you know, trial and error.
bring the cover back over. Let's see where we're at with it now. It's pretty close. And it doesn't have to be perfect because journals aren't perfect and I'm not perfect and I don't like perfect, so. And I think I'm gonna just put a little mark right here so that I know where to trim it. back over and line this up and trim and hopefully I didn't trim too much <laughs> we shall see I'm just playing y'all so don't judge me <laughs> no judging Okay, I think we're just going to go for it and see what it looks like. <clears throat> so I think what I'm going to do is use my Allen's Tacky Glue. Because it's a little thicker of a glue and it gives a good hold. So I'm going to kind of do this the way I did the, um, if I can get my glue open, the way I did the fabric cover. And I'm just going to start on one side with the glue because if you put too much at a time then your glue is going to start drying and then you're going to have a hard time getting it to stick down so we're just going to go a little at a time and place it on the cover a little bit at a time Okay, so here goes nothing. Right. Try not to get it to where it bubbles up. And then I'm going to use my bone folder and kind of press it down. Because I think as thick as this is, it needs something a little heavier than a card to press it down. I just kind of want to get it as smooth as I can and as flat as I can. And I don't mind, you know, bubbles or wrinkles or whatever. To me, that adds to, the, I'm a texture person, you know, so I like having the texture. Um, okay, so let's, we're just going to fold this back a little and add some more Allens. I love using the Allens for my covers because it's such a good glue. And sometimes, you know, if it gets too thick for you or whatever, you can add. I usually just dip it. I keep I keep this little jar here that I, you know, just put my my brushes back in when I'm finished with them. And so I'll dip it into that water and stir it back around into the glue some so that it, you know, it thins out the glue enough to make it lay down a little better. And I kind of wanted a thicker glue for this because this is, you know, it's it's kind of two pieces of paper together. It's a little thicker, in other words, than fabric or, um, you know, just your regular cardstock or scrapbook and paper. So, okay, so now let's go with this. And I'm just going to brush it, putting pressure on it as I go. 
Let me move this or I'll have it spilled everywhere. And then I'm going to take my bone folder. And I'm just going to press really, really well. And then I'm going to take it into the crease so that it gets in that crease really good. Okay. And then we'll add some more glue. So if you do just little bits at a time, you have a little more control over, you know, where your glue's going. I'm going to dip it in the water a little bit. Thin it out just a little so that the glue's not so thick that it won't dry. It seems to be, you know, kind of a fine line with that as far as, you know, having enough glue or, you know, not too much glue so that it doesn't dry good. Are you getting them, Gracie? Sparking at the neighbors. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna keep going. And again, making sure that it's, you know, forming into the crease where the, you know, the book will bend. And then I'm gonna take this. See, I feel a little bit of a bubble there. So as I'm doing this, you know, I'm gonna go back over the cover quite a few times to make sure it's got a good hold. And if y'all want me to do a video um, on how I did this with the um, the paper bag, I, can, I will do that. So just let me know. Okay. So it's just a matter of really working your paper you know, because it is a little bit thicker of a paper because you have product on it. You have, you know, you've got the brown paper bag layer. Then you have the collaged paper layer. Then you have the Mod Podge. Then you have the napkins and the gesso. You know, so it's a little thicker than just your average scrapbook and paper or cardstock. So, just, and it gets a little wrinkly, you know. So, you just kind of want to make sure that it's all grabbing hold of the glue and laying down flat like you want it. Okay. And then we're gonna try and finish the last of it. I'm going to dip my brush in a little bit of the water again just to kind of help thin out the glue so it's a little easier to spread. it all the way to your edges and then lay it down now I'm already seeing a problem so my brain is flying trying to think okay how do we fix the problem because you know you run into problems when you're crafting and you're creating things and you're making things and so the problem is there's just a tiny bit there of um, the paper behind the cover that's showing and so I'm thinking okay how do I fix that how do I make it look better and so I will either put like a pocket like a side pocket here so that it can come all the way to the edge and cover or, you know, put a few um, extra little strips here, you know, kind of collage them in and see how that goes. So we'll play with it in just a second. 
and see how we want to do it. But I'm really, I'm really liking the way this is turning out. Other than that, one little problem. So when you cut your your paper, you know your sheet, just cut it a little bit longer. And I usually do that. I don't know why I didn't think to do that with this. Probably because it's new to me and it's not something that I've done before and it just didn't cross my mind. So, little bubble there. Let's get that pushed down. And I'm going to keep going back over here and making sure it's all pushed down and it attaches to the glue. Okay. Where are we on our time? Oh, we're at 36 minutes. Good grief. Okay, so I'll do something with this to cover this up. I'm not going to do it on this video because I've already gone too long on the video. So, I um, just kind of wanted to share the process with you of, you know, and try something new. Hey, I'm trying something new with y'all. You know, I do that quite a bit, but... If I make a fool out of myself, well, <laughs> I guess I'm just keeping it real. <laughs> It'll be okay, won't it? But, other than this one little, you know, problem, I love how it turned out. I think it's uh, super pretty, and I think it'll make a great inside cover for the journal. So, um, with that being said, that's the inside cover, and that's the outside cover, semi-finished. Still have to put the um, quilt piece on the spine, but I'll come back and do a flip through. Um, well, you'll see it because once I sew the signatures in and stuff, I'm probably going to do a video of me um, decorating the journal. So, with all the goodies that we've been making so far, so you'll get to see it um, that way. So, I'm going to let this dry and then sew the signatures in, and then we'll we'll go from there. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this process video and um, please don't forget to like the video if you will and subscribe and um, leave me any comments or questions that you have below. I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Big hugs.